And I loved sitting there and being like, cha-ching, 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 all state. Probably smells like balls in there. In State Farm, really smells like dead salmon. I'd rather just go out and crush it on my own. I don't need Allstate to give me handout. What would you say to those contractors who think that supplementing insurance companies is unethical? Let's talk about insurance. Okay. A lot of, lot of new players I see on the rise. A lot of bad people, scammers. I see yeah. almost every day someone pops up like we do supplements with insurance. Right. And uh, companies who claim to be really good at working with insurance companies, representing roofing companies, but then three months later, right. you know, everybody gets in trouble. They get on the blacklist. Yeah. The roofing company get uh, in trouble with insurance company. Give advice someone who maybe don't have supplement uh, system in the company right and maybe thinking about outsourcing it hiring someone would you recommend outsourcing or trying to learn it yourself so that's a great question that I actually get from contractors all the time like we need to learn we're obviously leaving thousands of dollars behind on every single claim which that's if you know that that's a good starting point because there's a lot of roofing contractors that literally just think they're not getting Ridge and Starter and OMP, right? And I'm like, you guys, are, you could double your claims, right? Ethically and, and, and legitimately. But when it comes down to should we do it in-house or should we outsource, it really can be a personal choice. Like, if, if you just don't wanna deal with it at all, you don't wanna buy a training program, you don't wanna hire somebody to do it or you don't wanna do it yourself for whatever reason, outsource it. Um, and if you don't mind me, I, I, the recommendation I always make is contractor supplement solutions because they have a team of like 25 public adjusters. You can go on the Roof Sales Mastery website and click outsource supplements there because it's super easy. But they have a massive team of public adjusters that just kicks ass and their average supplement's five grand. So like if you give them 100 claims, you're going to get a half a million dollars in supplements. So if that's you, like outsource it. On the other hand, if you want to do it in-house, which I always, like, I enjoyed supplementing. I thought it was fun. I loved sitting there and being like, cha-ching, 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 right? Like, it was just, a, it was like having my own magic ATM machine, knowing what items to add, what to say. It was kind of a game, right? So if you want to just hire somebody, you can pay them a salary to work in the office for six hours a day if they want. And all they have to do, like if, if they go through a program like mine, and again, shameless sales plug here, but I've made it so stupid simple. Like here are the line items. Here's exactly what you say. Here's what the adjuster is gonna say. Here's what you say then. Here are the letters. Here are the language that you use. Here's how you use Xactimate. All that's in there. So hire somebody, put them through the course. Anybody can do it. It's not rocket science. Uh, and then you just have somebody in-house and you can have hands-on, you know exactly where every single file is right now, what needs to happen with it. So, I mean, both options are, are great. I think that it's really a personal choice. Do you want to hire somebody to do it? How long does it take someone to learn uh, and be somewhat good at supplementing? Working with, If I'm brand new, let's say I'm in sales now and my boss just say, Dimitri, you're going to be doing And you're it. brand new, you don't know shit. Yes. Okay. So I, I've taken, there's a lady specifically named Lisa that I remember, and uh, the, the business owner, I can't remember his name right now, he called me from Minnesota and he goes, so Becca, I have a gal who's worked for me for a few years, but she's always done like the administrative stuff, like basically secretary, right? And he's like, she doesn't know anything about sales, nothing about roofs, nothing about insurance, but I'd like her to be my in-house supplementer. I think she'd be good at it. Do you think if she took your course, she could do it? And I was like, yeah, and I said yes confidently, but really inside I'm like, I don't know, because most of the people at that, this was years ago, most of the people at that point had been roofing contractors themselves that they knew something, right? And they're coming and saying, I want to master this. So I confidently said yes, not knowing, just hoping that it, that it would work. So I'm like, I mean, I've put everything together. There isn't anything else that she would need to know. Like she might have to Google and get familiar with what some roofing components are. But within the first two weeks, she had sent me an Allstate claim that was like $4,200. It's somewhere on my website. You can look it up. It, it, there's a, I think it's called Adjusters Thanking You for Sending Supplements. But she was so excited. She's like, Becca, this is like one of my first ones. I sent it off. I asked for $4,200. Here's the response. And the Allstate adjuster just goes, thanks for sending that over. Check is in the mail for 42, whatever. And so I was, that gave me wow. so much confidence in the program, of course. But here's what I would say to answer your question in a, in a sure. more roundabout way. 
to learn and to be able to start using it and actually getting some results, even though you haven't mastered it yet, I always say probably about two weeks if you wanted to feel confident. Like, it's really not that hard. You're going in and you're just, I have it broken down into a master list of supplemental items. So it shows you, roofing, here are all the things I currently know. Do they fit? Pretty easy, pick the ones that fit. Siding, gutters, right? And then here are the scripts. The, the part that's the learning curve, I think, for people is probably learning Xactimate, which the course is 25 hours. Shout out to Alina Wilson, because she's the Xactimate Mastery Wizard. Yeah. But that's 25 hours. You work hours. with her? She works for you, or? We have kind of an affiliate partnership, because, she, yeah, she came, she was doing, at the time, she was one of only 19 certified Xactimate trainers in the country. And this was back in like 2015. And what she had been doing was live trainings. Like she was going to people's businesses or they had to come and she was going to a hotel and running the trainings. But that became very arduous. Like doing live trainings like that, you get burnt out. You can only teach 25 people at a time in a classroom like that. It takes a long time because people are asking questions. So she had seen uh, what I was doing with Roof Sales Mastery and reached out to me and was like, how do I make my business online like yours? So we work together to create Xactimate Mastery. And she does, I mean, a phenomenal job. She's like, she's so meticulous about learning and teaching. She does such an incredible job with that. You can't teach somebody like, oh, State Farm in your state acts like this, right? Like some people love State Farm in their state. And then other states, they freaking hate State Farm. So learning like, okay, these insurance companies in my state or the town that I'm in are behaving like this. These are their sticking points. I know that I'm not gonna get this, so I ask for that instead. And then the objection handling process. Like that's one that can be, I always say I teach it, if this, then that. Like they're gonna say this when you ask them for this item, say that. If they say that, you say this. And you go back and forth and you ping pong until they either give you what you want or you get enough of the supplement that you're asking for to be like, okay, we asked for six grand, we got five, let's move on. So that might take months, you know, a few months to get really, really good at and master. But two weeks, you could be up and running getting supplements in. Can for you sure. name one, like the worst practice uh, asking insurance in negotiation with the insurance companies? Like the worst practices. Like, for example, I see a lot of contractors, they just ask, for this guy that you know and i don't yeah. know maybe you like it but they'll take ten thousand dollar claim and they'll supplement to fifty thousand right hoping to get 15. for right. me that's just that's just wrong yeah uh, as a practice i would not want to run business this way yeah but i guess for some people is oh it's negotiation what are the worst mistakes you see contractors do on a regular basis? I would say asking for things that just aren't legitimate. Like, don't ask for a porta potty if you're not going to get a porta potty. Like, and I think there's a lot of misconception around what supplementing is because contractors that don't actually know what the process is, they think that to take a claim from ten thousand to twenty thousand, you have to be adding fluff. And I always hate when people say that because. What I'm trying to help people understand that think that it's fluff is these are completely legitimate line items out of Xactimate. We're not making these up. I'm not asking you know, Nationwide to order me 25 large pizzas and a bouncy house for the crew and live music so that they have entertainment while we're building the roof, right? We're asking for real materials, labor, and, and you know, safety precautions and stuff like that. So I wouldn't say that in terms of bad practices, can you ask for too much? That has to be, you just have to use common sense. Like I'm not gonna try to run a residential three tab job, like a commercial job, right? I'm not gonna ask for safety precautions and cones and caution tape and stuff like that and scaffolding for a ranch style three tab house. So that would be a bad practice if you're trying to just yep. max things out like that. Um, but it really just comes down to most people are asking for the wrong line items and they're asking for it in the wrong way. Like it's a sales pitch is what I always say. You're closing the insurance adjuster on the items that you're asking for. You're selling them basically, right? So a lot of contractors, I think just, they demand the sun, the moon and the stars. You over OMP and blah, blah, blah. The other mistake is they try to do it on site. Like they try to do it with the field adjuster and they'll threaten them sometimes. I'm gonna take your ladder down or whatever. I'm gonna shove you off the roof. Like guys, can we stop doing that? You look like assholes, all right? So don't try to like arm wrestle the field adjuster. It, I would love to arm wrestle the field you adjuster. You can literally physically arm wrestle the field adjuster and you'd probably win because you're dealt to the size of cantaloupes. 
Uh, <laughs> but that's just, you know, I, I think the biggest mistakes will revolve around that. You're asking for things either that you're straight up not getting, like a porta potty, or you're not using that, and then asking the wrong way, being demanding, and just not validating and handling objections in the proper way. So that's, again, what I teach people is like, here's what to do, here's exactly what to say. And that just helps people a lot. <laughs> Speaking of arm wrestling, at the last expo or ex, uh, international expo two years ago, yeah. I wanted to arm wrestle uh, Pink Panther. Yeah. So it was Pink Panther. Uh, so I just arm wrestling someone, just something we do yeah. with the chat cells and a few other guys. And Pink Panther was walking by. <laughs> and actually, it was a guy inside. And Turns he, out it's Jason Momoa inside. <laughs> well, well, he wanted to do it, right? Yeah. So, and we just wanted to do it for fun, just right. for the video. It would be a cool video. You're at the expo. Arm. So. We're getting in the position and there's a two people like high rank authority of, uh, for OC yeah. running as absolutely no physical activities with Pink Why? Panther. We're like, this is set up. Like, you know, P Pink Panther is going to beat me. It's going. <laughs> yeah. And there's like, no, no sport activity. <laughs> And she was so mad. Oh my that word. woman, I thought she was going to kill me. No fun allowed. Well, she's like, no sport. Like, Pink Panther cannot engage in any sports activity. I'm like, well, this is just arm wrestling. It's right. fun. It's for a YouTube video. No, they, they would not play it. So you didn't get to arm wrestle him? No, no. I'm they, really they, sorry that your dreams didn't come true. One day. One I know day. that that can be that, really that, that, that suit, it's horrible. We actually uh, bought it, uh, we did a home show in Minneapolis and I wore that suit. Probably smells like balls in there. They ship you in a box and feel like <laughs> at least 10 people died in that suit before really you. Really bad. No, it's really there was, bad. There was a kid that I grew up with named Ben Edwards and he had this gorilla costume that he wore like <laughs> all the time. And you, it was, there were, vile scents and odors coming out of that thing. It was like, you can't wash it, but people won't let it die. And I'm betting Pink Panther probably smells like dead salmon. Well, th they ship it from company to company, from event to event. Yeah. It's, it's huge, right? Right. And I don't know what they do in between, if they wash it or not. They probably not. just Febreze it a little bit, t t spray a little ax in there, yeah. you know, <laughs> fixes everything. Uh, the worst insurance company to work with. Oh man, I would probably have to say Allstate and State Farm can be the toughest. I think everybody notoriously knows Allstate sucks. <laughs> They're the most difficult, I would say, most of the time, even just in the beginning. Like they, I mean, I've been on roofs that were smashed in Pennsylvania. Obvious, big, I mean, the most beautiful, like when you step on it, you're just like, ah, this is gonna be a slam dunk, right? <laughs> and Allstate comes and they're like, well, we need 17 hits per square and there's only 16. And you're like, what <laughs> and literally all the roofs in the neighborhood are like physically going on right now and you're like what so all state could be pretty what, tough. what do you do in a situation like that i mean it's really the same old stuff if you really want to escalate it you can obviously take something to appraisal if you want do to. you recommend that um to be perfectly honest i never had experience personally with appraisal because that wasn't really like a thing that we were doing really yet back in the day because i started selling roofs in 2010. So that's something that's caught on, I think, more over the last five years. We've got people who are, are really taking over that space in a, in a major way. I didn't really ever do that. Um, my method was always just get a reinspect. First of all, just try to ask questions while I'm there on site. And this is something that I teach. I always ask, like, one of my favorite famous lines that works really well is I'll say, okay, like, I can, I can understand you guys have to, you know, have your, your hits per square or whatever. Like, this roof is obviously smashed up. Would you agree? Like the 16 out of the 17 hits, and I might be exaggerating a little bit, but the 16 that, you, that you're seeing here that you've circled, these are legitimate hail spots, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're so close. Like, would you say, I couldn't say with 100% honesty that this is damage from hail or not, but I also couldn't say with 100% certainty that it's not hail damage. Would you agree? And they almost always say yes to that. So I'm like, well, should Smart. wouldn't it be kind to, you know, favor in the... Uh, favor the insured in this instance. So doing things like that can help. Um, but mostly I would usually just get a reinspection. And something that I teach in my course is when you do that, put together an adjuster report. Like your Xactimate needs to look exactly like what an adjusters would look like. Do test scores, take pictures, send that in and have a letter from your homeowner expressing their dissatisfaction, right? Because remember like the customer, the homeowner is the one that, that the insurance company has a policy with, a contract with. 
So when you and I go out to somebody's property and we're trying to argue that there's damage, Allstate doesn't give a shit because they don't owe us anything, right? But they owe Mr. and Mrs. Jones. So if Mr. and Mrs. Jones say, here's what is on my roof, here's all the information, the verification, the photos, the documentation, can you explain to me in writing the grounds of which I'm being denied? And if you put them on the spot like that and ask them to put stuff in writing, a lot of the time they just cave because they know that they're not operating out of fairness. Really? So, so they would something. not do it most of the time? They would not put it in writing? It, can they say no. we don't have to do it? We don't have to deny it? I, I'm not sure what would happen if they, usually if the customer is asking them for something in writing, like they're, they have to respond, I've found. They might, they're the client, they're paying premiums. Exactly, like they they're a customer, them. right. And so I think that probably more, what happens more often is people either just give up too early or they don't leverage the homeowner or they allow phone calls to happen. And something that I've noticed is phone calls they'll say anything they want on the phone because they're not putting it in writing. And let's just say that it went to the Department of Insurance or it went to court for some reason or something like that. If it's in writing, it's documentable. Like we're not playing yep. the he said, he said, she said game. So they're not going to straight up lie in writing most of the time. So that's been a tactic that's like we ask, why is it being denied? And sometimes they'll just approve it then. <laughs> Love it. Give one advice to the homeowner who has an insurance claim. Yeah. Like dealing with the contract or dealing with insurance. So my advice to homeowners, I know that it can be scary dealing with these because they, they don't want to be taken advantage of, right? They don't want to be taken advantage of by their insurance company, but they also don't want to be taken advantage of by their roofer. Just understand that you and your contractor are on the same team, right? Like the contractor wants the roof approved because they want to make money on the job. They want to do the job you want the roof approved because you just want your home repaired. Nobody can make money on this except the contractor. So like, unless you're committing insurance fraud, which is a felony and I don't like jail food, do you? Like the homeowner can't make money anyway. So just pick a good contractor, trust them in the, in the supplement process, just communicate like, and that's on the contractor's side. They have to make sure that they're explaining to Mrs. Jones why their claim is going from 10,000 to $20,000. Here are the line items. Here's what they are. Here's why I'm asking for them. You know, the insurance company didn't pay for those. So what I'm doing, you know, walk them through the process, get the homeowner to understand what you're doing, full transparency and homeowners. Like you just want your home fixed at the end of the day and you don't want to pay a penny more than your deductible. So let the contractor do their job. It doesn't matter if the job's a million dollars or 10,000, like you only have to pay your deductible. So don't sweat that stuff. Give one advice to the contractors. So contractors, it all goes down to education. Like your job is to know exactly how this stuff works so that you can educate your customers. And how I know that people, like contractors are not very educated on the insurance process is because their closing ratio is not 90%. And if it's not 90%, it means that you don't know how to educate your customer properly on how this process works. Because if you did, every single person you talk to would be like, this is a sick deal, it's a no brainer, where do I sign? So contractors, you guys need to understand how insurance companies pay, right? You really thoroughly need to understand depreciation. You have to understand how adjusters work. You need to know exactimate. You need to know how things are estimated and you need to be able to communicate that in your sales pitch to your customers. So my number one, and again, I'm biased in saying this, but my number one recommendation is get formal training. Like you have to have a bulletproof proof sales pitch to be able to do that effectively and to communicate that stuff to your customers. And when you do, it is so easy. You shoot and you score. You make it sound easy. It is, like it is so easy. I feel like so many people are going out there blind and I, they're doing what I call the shotgun approach, which is like mostly trial and error. They know that it's an opportunity that works and if they're just throwing enough shit at the wall, something's gonna stick. So they're out there blind with a blindfold on blasting shotgun pellets, right? Hoping they hit something. And it, you're wasting ammunition, you're wasting energy. You have to take a lot of shots to try to hit your target. My whole method was, how do I get so good at this that I can take a sniper rifle and if I go out today into the neighborhood and I knock three doors, I get one. I know I'm gonna sign it unless they don't speak English or something. Boom, I shoot, I score, I go home. And I get a deal a day doing that. Like, it's, it. it's easy, it is easy, but it's very hard when you don't know what to do and say. So oh. get training. <laughs> What's your take on uh, MadSky MPR programs? 
I feel that it's something that is attractive to contractors who are having a hard time getting into neighborhoods. But I think that overall for the industry, it doesn't seem to be good for our pockets. I, sure. I think that it's kind of forcing people to lower their prices. And if everybody starts doing that, our whole industry suffers from it. I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm a fan of being an entrepreneur, going out and not, like I, I get why it's attractive to try to make a partnership with Orders. the hand that feeds you, it seems like. Yep. But I'm seeing that contractors that do that, they're having to take a pay cut to do that because your, your, your job sizes are dramatically smaller. You have to play ball with the insurance company then. I'm not a huge fan of it. I will admit, I don't know all the intricacies of how it works. I've sure. never like investigated it a whole lot, but it doesn't seem to be something that is good for our businesses. Like I'd rather just go out and crush it on my own. I don't need all state to give me handouts. Sure. Yeah. What's the average increase you see across the nation everywhere? Like average is it 20%, 25%? How much insurance is, if you take all insurances combined, Yeah how much their initial estimate is lowered? Do they, how much they shorten homeowners on average? How much do they shorten it? At like least 40%. 40%. To add a bare, well, I would say, when I, I'll, I'll reverse that question. When, what I teach, contractors get an average between, I, I advertise $2,500 because I like to under promise and over deliver, but I can guarantee at least $2,500 on your typical residential claims being left behind. Most people are getting like $4,500. So I would say on your average $10,000 claim, I mean, that is 25 to 45% that's being left behind. And that's what we're getting approved by the way. So I would say it's probably at least 40% that's getting left behind. Like when you look at a claim and you look at your Xactimate, you go, all of these line items are totally legit. Doesn't mean you're gonna get them. So if we're averaging across the board, 4,000, 4,500 in additions approved per claim for a residential, that means that they're easily leaving off 40, 50, 50%, something like that. Love it. Who commits more fraud? Contractors or insurance companies? Insurance companies, <laughs> a thousand percent, right? I mean, and you have to, th like I always say, insurance companies are businesses and they're in business to make money. And it's good business for them to go, like nobody wants, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, right? And they don't want to be the insurance company that doesn't pay. So what do they do? Well, instead of going out and just saying, we're not paying for it, they go, yes, you have damage and we're going to give you $8,500, right? And the customer thinks, great. And that's why they go and they think they need to find a roofer that can do it for 8,500 bucks. When really we look at it and we go, okay, but they gave you shingles, felt, a box bent, and they didn't give you A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Your sure. claim should be 17,000, right? So it's the insurance company. I mean, they're, they're the ones screwing people over, but. I see a lot of uh, a lot of coaches out there, especially in your your competition. Yeah. Um, almost claiming or making promises that they always get ONP. Is yeah. it possible to get ONP on every job? I think that I don't know about getting it 100% of the time. I've never been able to get it 100% of the time. But the method that I've found that works is I have a letter <laughs> and there's more that goes into it. Like it's not just if you have the letter, you've got it. There's a whole setup sure. process. The customer has to know what to say. You've set it up. But what I've found is most of the time an HO3 policy says something along the lines of OMP is for if it's reasonably likely that a homeowner might hire a general contractor. So if you're a general contractor, the, the old argument of number of trades versus complexity is really just this like, cat and mouse catch 22 game that they play because that's not even what the rules are but if you get caught up in that like let's say that you they're like you don't have enough trades and you go well but there's hvac so it's roof siding gutters and there's an air conditioning unit it's four trades and they go okay well it's four trades but it's not complex enough in nature that's what they do so i stopped playing that game because i realized there's no way to win that one right so i created that letter that homeowners send in themselves and they're like here are all the reasons that it's i'm asking for ONP, and that has worked amazingly <laughs> like because again it, you're you're leveraging the policyholder that has the contract with the insurance company so is there a way to get it 100 percent of the time i'm not a lawyer i'm not suing everybody and i'm not taking everything to appraisal so i can't speak on that sure um 
I don't think that there's a way to get it 100% of the time. I'm sure that's probably an exaggeration. M my thing about uh, homeowners being involved in asking for NP is homeowners often don't want contractors to make more money. And, yeah. and they say it, like I, I, I've had people telling me like, oh, Mish, you did good on this job. Uh, or they, they would, uh, I just um, took customer, well, we just got paid on the job from three years ago. Oh my that, gosh. That final check, so just two, three thousand dollars, but homeowners yeah. like, you, you did great. Because we supplement and then extra checks coming in and right. homeowners like, I think it's too much money for you. They yeah. count your, your money, so not every homeowner <laughs> are willing to when they see that okay you take you took fifteen thousand dollar job and you made it 25 not every homeowner is okay with it it's not about the homeowner sure. it's about the salesperson explaining to them up front why yep. that's going to be the problem so if you don't and then all of a sudden money shows up then they're like well what's all this extra money for so it's about the sales process it's not about well homeowners sure. just don't want to give the contractor money so part of it is it, like in my sales presentation that I have word for word, like I show them, here's where you're planting seeds about what supplementing is. And then throughout the process, when the customer gets their paperwork back, I have a full script for here's exactly how to show them what we're asking for. They're on your side. If you do it the right way, they're pissed that the insurance company left off the generator and cornice returns and corner strips and all that stuff too. Uh, one last advice. Um, to contractors, there's a group of roofers, roofing contractors, who cannot make the switch to start working with the insurance company because for them it's unethical. Give them advice maybe. So I see a lot of guys who are saying, well, we only need $300 a square. Yeah. And there's this little hate, hatred going yeah. where those roofers think that we're Storm scam artists or something. Yes, like if, if you charge $450, you're unethical. So what would you say to those contractors who think that supplementing insurance companies is unethical? So the first thing that they have to realize is we're forced to play the Xactimate game, right? Like the insurance companies are actually dictating the price because they're making us use Xactimate. If we were going out and doing retail and we just did charge $300 a square, it's, we don't go and itemize the estimate ever. We just go, it's $300 a square, it's a 712, here's what it's gonna be, right? So because the insurance company is forcing us to use Xactimate and they have it itemized line by line, they're making us do the same thing. So if we itemize using Xactimate, this is just what the price ends up being. No different than if you go to the doctor, right? And if you go through insurance, they jack up the price because that's how they make money. And insurance companies, by the way, make like, gosh, I'd almost have to look up the stat, maybe you know it, but how much did State Farm profit last year? It was like 19 well, billion dollars, no, no, something well, so ridiculous. What, what they do is, like, I actually look at those numbers. So they would, collect like 60 billion right so that's their sales the profit would be i think all state is like two or three billion it's insane it's, so two three four five billion so if you think about how much they actually pay so if if they collect 60 billion like every everywhere in like all the insurance companies across the nation right, right. so the number is you know 100 two, 300 billion whatever yeah you know how much they pay in claims like five billion yeah like that's how much they pay. It's insane. Yes. So, and, and I'd like to add this. Remember that when you're doing a retail sales job, you're just going right in the bid and then doing in the roof. Out. Yep. You, they don't see, like if you're a contractor that doesn't do insurance sales, the, the bullshit we have to go through to get that claim approved, shouldn't we be paid for the hours invested in going and doing the adjustment meeting, doing the supplement, doing the back and forth with the mortgage company. We're spending, I mean, each claim is like probably six, seven, eight, ten 10 hours. The way I explain to my customers when I used to sell a couple of years ago, I always tell homeowners, I said, there's two prices, cash price, and if we have to go through insurance and the difference is because I have to add entire department. Yes. So just like you go to the doctor, there's a cash price. If right. you pay out of pocket, because when hospital adds their billing, there's a lot of negotiations and they don't yes. get hundred percent. There's going to be 80%. So I might get $350 or I might get 450 from insurance. And the difference is not my greed. Right. It's someone's time. 
it's me financing the job for the next 30, right. 45 days. Right. And you don't know if you're gonna get it even. Exactly. And on top of that, it's like, the homeowner isn't going to pocket money either way. Whether you charge $300 a square mm -hmm. or $500 a square on insurance, their price doesn't change because their price is their deductible. So it isn't about ethics, that's just the game. Like, and, and think about how things are in life in general. Like if I wanted to go and buy a gallon of milk at the gas station, I'm gonna have to pay $5 for it. True. But if I go to City Market, you know, high V. I'm gonna probably pay $2 for it. And I'm not saying, oh, that's a racket. It's like, well, that's not what they do. So this is how much that's you pay market. here. It's, it's a great analogy. You go to the stadium, you're gonna pay $5 per row, but, it, but it's convenience. Stadiums right. have to charge more to make more money, the same Coke, but you don't like it, don't, don't buy it. Yeah, stay out of the kitchen. If you don't like the heat, stay out. <laughs> but like, why are you afraid of making more money? Like, it, it isn't bad to make money. We live in America. Well, you, you, you have to learn. You have to learn the billing. And I think a lot of contractors, they're not willing to learn. Yeah. And they feel vulnerable on, in the marketplace. So Correct. it's that little hate. It's like, oh, you're, you're a bad guy. Bingo. Instead of learning how to do the process, it's like, I feel like I don't know something. So I'm just going to, and I don't know how to play the game and I'm not willing to learn. And therefore I'm just going to call you guys storm chaser fly by nights. And, and my, my thing is I'm just going to go around to my customers and say that they're taking advantage, advantage of you. And really I'm just, I'm not educated, I don't know how to do it, I feel intimidated, and I'm not maybe willing to learn or I just haven't learned. So once you learn it, you go, this all makes perfect sense and nobody's being taken advantage of. It's just a game, right? Customers are never getting taken advantage of in a proper insurance claim because again, they get their job done, whether it costs 10,000 or $100,000, they get it done for their deductible. The insurance company is profiting billions of dollars and they're screwing people over every single day that have legitimate damage and they don't want to pay. So like we're kind of heroes going in and being like, Mrs. Jones, don't even worry about it. I'm going to make sure that you get your house. You're going to get an extreme makeover edition on your house, which is going to be freaking sweet for a thousand bucks. Probably I'm going to get to make a good commission on this job to go and take care of my family. And the insurance company is going to do exactly what they're supposed to do, which is you've been paying premium for the last 10 years. You've never used it. And they're going to, pay for your peril, right? They're gonna pay for your loss. It's just how it works. Enjoy Probably. it. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. I know I did, Becca. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We have a special gift for you. Comment below the uh, number one or number two reason why you are not investing in your education, why you are skeptical about buying new course or if you do buy courses, maybe you have a habit to buy a course and not completing them. What's stopping you to complete it? Uh, we all have done it, you know, you buy a gym membership and never go. What's stopping you? I wanna know, uh, do you have 17 kids or you're spending too much on the Facebook? Comment below what's stopping you to buy or complete a course. Uh, Becca will pick a winner from comments below. I will throw a couple t-shirts to best comments as well, send you a few hats and you know, uh, some are roofing inside swag, but uh, what's the price to, for your winner? So what you guys will win is a one hour Zoom video team meeting for me for your team. So if you've got salesmen, I'll hop on there with them. We'll do objection handling, referrals training. They can ask Q&A and get some real live training from me um, on a Zoom call, so. Love it, that's very generous. If you enjoyed this in the interview, give us one of those. Comment below, uh, answer to our trivia question today and subscribe to the channel if you're new to us. I'll see you guys in the next video.